Good morning, everybody. Uh, what day is today? Oh my goodness. Um, Tuesday, I think. <laughs> okay, so, um, so today I'm very excited because I found something yesterday that, um, that is super exciting and, um, interesting. You know, sometimes I think that the exciting things are not, um, other people might not find it so exciting. <laughs> okay, I'm just going through my um, my little thing here to make sure everything is on, and it looks like we're on. Let's see. Just waiting to see who's coming on here. Okay. Anyway, so what we're going to do today is, um, just looking at all the cameras here, see what's going on here. So today I have water boiling and um, we're going to make a couple different things. And um, the uh, first thing that I wanted to mention, because we need to do this first, and I don't know if Jane's on here yet or not, but... Um, she is here. Okay, Jane's here. Yay! Okay, this is for Jane. I wish I'd have had this for your birthday yesterday, but anyways. Um, look what I found. Cattails. I'm so excited. So, cattails. And look, we have the little, if you can see that, the little, I'll hold it against my shirt so you can see it better. Um, the little cattail corn on the cob. Or cattail on the cob, on the cob in this case. Um, so cattail is completely and totally edible, uh, also known as bulrush, and um, they were investigated years and years ago as a food source, um, especially at the end of um, World War II. Apparently, they were looking at it as a food source because the whole entire plant is edible. It's um, it's. Uh, the root is, has been used, it's very, um, it's like a potato, but it's much starchier. And so it's very, um, if you've ever eaten okra, you know, it's got a little bit of that kind of mucilaginous sliminess to it. So, um, so best used with, you know, other flowers if you can, but if you can't, as a food source, it has great qualities. It's great for soups, stews, um, anything like that. So the root is completely edible. The, um, the uh, little stalks in, in here, so if you peel it back, and uh, especially when they're like when they're two feet tall or less, um, the, um, the actual stalk is edible, kind of like an asparagus. So you can eat the shoots, like the small shoots. Um, you can eat them raw if you are in a um, situation where you you have an injury or uh, scrape or bleeding or something like that you can use the jelly from the leaves the jelly here from the leaves to um, for it it has healing properties and it also has uh, pain um, and inflammation so you can you can actually squish this up or chew this up and put it on a any kind of a, a you know minor injury if you're out in the bush and you don't have anything else um, the um, roots and the stem medicinally have been used for fevers. Um, it can be used medicinally as a diuretic, and so that would be more like a tea, so that would be more medicinal use. Um, but the whole thing is completely edible. So I'm going to peel this back for you to see. And the little, um, the little cattail, cattail on the cob. We're going to do that in the, um, in the hot water here. So if you peel this back, you can see that underneath, if you keep going, this one here, see, you almost have to, you don't really see it until you peel everything back. Like you don't find the little cattail on the cob until you peel everything back. And then you've got your cattail on the cob here. So if you peel this off and then, and then these peels, um, can be used, right? If you're out in the bush. So this is the little cattail part on the cob. 
And so it has the stem, right? So if you, I'll hold it against my blouse so you can see it better. If you break this off and you use that for your corn on the cob, cattail on the cob, this part here is, is edible as asparagus. And so, um, so they can be eaten fresh. They can be eaten um, cooked um, if they, if they, um, oh, let me think about that. Um, when they turn, that's what I was going to say before I forget, when they turn and they get the big brown bull rush thing, like the cattail on it, uh, that's been used as a fire starter. Uh, there are recipes for that brown part being used um, in like um, pancakes or, or um, whatever those things are called, kind of like a roti. <laughs> anyway, flour pancakes. Uh, but you, you would you mix them in flour because they're very, if they fall apart, you know, they're pretty, as you can tell, when the brown part starts falling apart at the end of the summer, it just blows into like little, um, little feathery pollens, kind of like a dandelion. So that's good for fire starter. And, um, but when it's, when it's just turning brown, it's a good, um, addition to the, um, it's a good addition to, um, the flour if you're making pancakes and that kind of thing. So, um, Good morning, darling. Oh, nice to see you. Um, so anyway, yeah, so the cattail, so I'm super excited. So this is totally edible. So we're going to cook this up too. And I'm just going to peel these off. I should quit talking and get, get to work here because we have other things to do besides cattails today. Um, see that part is too tough. You can tell when you get down to the part that's too tough. So we have the little... We have these, which are really good for using for um, scratches and that kind of thing. And then we have the little corn on the cobs, and then we have the asparagus part. Okay, so, which is the inner shoot. And of course, any edible plant that you have uh, when you are um, wild crafting or, or any plant that you're eating that's edible in the wild, they're always more tender and um, nicer in the you know in the spring so you can see that can you see the three parts so this is like the wiggly bottom and then we've got sort of a yellowy part here and then we have the corner on the cob part here so i'm going to snap that off just to have it separate and then we'll cook these parts mm -hmm. completely totally um edible with the um with the whole plant like it's just uh, they were going to use it as a food source, and, and there's no reason not to uh, because it's it grows really well in any, you know, moist environment like at the, at the uh, in a ditch or, or um, swampy pond area or whatever. And um, I wish you guys could try this with me. Jane has done this before with me, and it was so fun. So the little, the little cattails are... Um, they will actually turn the water sort of an orangey brown, um, but it still tastes good. Okay, I'm gonna try and quickly go through these for you guys. We have we have a whole meal here. We have one more. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, let's see. They have the new stock shoots have vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C. Um, so you know what? I think I will just leave these because I'm gonna build kill. Definitely kill the vitamin C if I cook it. So I'm going to leave a couple of these. I'm just going to cook a couple. Um, but I will cook the little, all the corn on the cobs. So, because um, they're so fun. And it's, it's, um, it's not as sweet as corn on the cob. Um, but it's, it's got a really nice flavor. So, okay. Well, there we go. We're getting the leaves in here. So this is boiling. We're going to put the little corn on the cob, get the little, it's just like peeling the cob off. So we're gonna put these guys in here. And I will put one stock in, I'll save the rest for like salad because they're fresh, but I will put this one in and I'm gonna, I'll break him. I didn't know if it would break easily. It's just like asparagus, right? So, you know, you're just breaking it. That one might be too tough. Oh yeah, that's the yellow part. Get my glasses on. The yellow part's a little too tough. So like asparagus, you just bend it where it breaks. And then use that part. So the little corn on the cobs. Whoops. 
little skin on there. That's okay. No big deal. We'll save these for the salad. And um, so if you can see, I might put a little more water in. Can you guys see okay? I don't know if you can see this okay. That they're in the water. I don't want to use a lot of water right now because we're going to do something else and I need to dump the water out because we're going to we're going to cook conventional food in a minute. And, um, but anyway, so we're just going to let that, um, cook just like corn on the cob. And when it gets ready, uh, it'll be kind of a little bit of a brown in the meantime, in the meantime, what we're going to do is we are going to cut up some carrots for our next dish while these guys are cooking. And, um, I'm going to add one more little piece just because that's, that's going to be so yummy. So I'm going to add one more piece of the tender asparagus part, the young shoot part. Okay, back to the rest of the, um, rest of the plan here. We're going to do carrots and um, carrots on the floor for the dog. Okay, so I'm going to sit like this because it is, it is definitely harder for me to cut when I'm sitting down. But I'm going to do three carrots at once and um, a little bit thin and on the diagonal. I hope I'm not rattling you guys. And so okay we're doing the carrots. Carrots have vitamin A. Um, good for your eyes. Oh my gosh beta carotene. All that good stuff. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to, um, we're going to make like a carrot Catalina salad. So that will be the thing. And then we're going to do something else too. So just scoot these over and do some more carrots while we're waiting. And of course I always, always wash my, um, set that there so I can see what's going on here. Um, I always wash all vegetables before we put them in the fridge because that makes the meal faster. You open up the fridge and you don't have to wash anything. You're that much more apt to um, eat your vegetables if they're already washed. I had a few people say, well, you know, when you wash your vegetables and then you put them in the fridge for a few days, you lose the nutrients, But which is true. But what I have found is when you don't wash your vegetables, you tend to leave them in your fridge for like up to five days longer, which equals out to probably losing the exact same amount of nutrients as washing them. Um, and then um, rather than not washing them and just leaving them to wilt without being washed, because that's what, that's what happens with me anyway. If they aren't washed, then it it's just adds that extra time. And again, I, I look very awkward here because I'm not used to doing this sitting down, and if I stand up, you <laughs> you won't see my head, which is okay too. I have about 125 videos of me where you don't see me, and I'm actually cooking at my stove, um, which is uh, which is not happening here because you can't see me and the stove at the same time the way my kitchen is built. But we always make do with what we have, and we always have what we need, but we might not have what we want, but we have what we need. I hope everybody does. I know lots of people don't, but um, that's my wish for everybody to have what they need. And if you're lucky, what you want. So the rain, the rain, the rain, you guys. Slug City. I have to say, I've so had it with the slugs. Trying to get um, the... Um, garden to grow with all these slugs running around. It's just been crazy. Actually, you know what? I think these guys are done. And um, so the water's turning a little bit brown green. I'm going to try one of the corn on the cobs. And so, you know, you could do whatever. Um, I think they're done. I'm going to try it because I don't want to waste a bunch of time with you guys. We've got other things to do, but this is really fun. And I encourage you to try them. So this is the little corn on the cob. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my gosh, it's just so, it's um, similar to corn on the cob, which I remember that. It's been a while, it's been a couple of years since I've done this. 
And um, I'm going to chew it a little bit and then show you. Sounds a little gross, but I have to chew it down to the stalk. Hmm. That's really good. I better turn that off. You know what? Because, um, oh wow, because it's not overcooked. It's really, really, mm, like between an asparagus and an artichoke. Well, I just want to chew it down to the stalk so you can see. I'll hold it against my shirt. So you can see that it has the little center core there where I chewed it down. And that's, you know, pretty decent. I mean, it took me like almost half a minute to chew that. I, I would imagine, I'm not going to do it in front of you. <laughs> I would imagine that you could put it between your teeth and pull it out like an artichoke leaf. I'm not even going to attempt that right now in case I start choking on it or something. And also that would look really weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, so isn't that awesome? Try it. Free food. Free food, you guys. And that is really good. And actually, if you look at this one here, try and pull it out without, <clears throat> without burning myself. This one here is quite, quite a bit bigger. It's not too hot. So you can see that you can get them, um, this one's like twice the size, so it's gonna have twice as much corn on there, and that is hot. So, um, super, super awesome. Um, I'm just gonna try the little asparagus-y part here while I have you on, and, oh my God, wow. Mm. Free asparagus, we should be growing this in our backyard, or our front yard. Wow, that is so good. That's awesome. Mm, really good. Wow. I forgot how good this was. We should be picking these all the time. I'm going to do that. Now's the time. Get out there. That is that, mm, really good. Okay, on to the next thing. Oh my God, that's so good. It doesn't even need like salt or butter or anything. That is so good. Okay, so I'm going to put these in here just because I need to use um, the pot for the next thing. Although I could have left those in there and put them with the carrots. But, um, oh my God, that's so good. I can even eat that and keep on talking. That is awesome. <laughs> and because those of you that know me know that I generally have a difficult, have a difficulty with that. I generally have a difficulty. Okay, so carrots on here. Oh, those are so good. I'm just going to put these guys over here. And so um, carrots, yeah, we're going to get these guys going. And I don't want them um, super cooked because it's going to be like a Catalina salad, Catalina carrot salad. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But I used to have it when I was a kid, and um, my mom didn't cook a lot. In fact, she hardly ever cooked. Well, she cooked, but... But once, once TV dinners came in, in the early 60s, I think it was, and Tang and Carnation Instant Breakfast, and all the cereals were fortified with all the vitamins and minerals that you need. That's what I grew up on. So, um, yeah, but I do remember having this, so it must have been a special occasion or something. And I really, really liked it, and I haven't made it in quite a, quite a while since but um it's really uh quite lovely so i have this on high so we're going to make the sauce for it and um we're going to we're going to make two different things and so i'm thinking i'm going to use the other well it doesn't matter i have two of these okay i just want you to be able to see what i'm doing okay so we're going to start off with a um tomato paste and uh, I'm sure if you really wanted to cheat, you could, um, you could do a uh, Catalina dressing if you wanted to. But we're going to do the whole recipe. So we're going to do like a half a can of, um, it's about half, maybe. That's close to half. Half a can of tomato paste. And then we're going to add... Um, the um, 
some coconut sugar because we're going to make like a sweet and sour out of this. So I'm um, going, this is actually, um, yeah, there's quite a few carrots. So this is about a quarter of a cup. I think I'm just going to put this all in. And the coconut sugar is, um, has a lower glycemic index than other sugars. Definitely healthier for you than um, any white sugar, or brown sugar, anything like that. So it's very good. If you wanted to, you could have a um, maple syrup as well for the sweetener. I'll just mix that around a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, <laughs> I forgot a measuring cup. I always try and remember everything, but it's like totally impossible. So we're going to pretend this is, we're going to add, vinegar is pretty strong. This is an apple cider vinegar with the mother in it, the Nona Pia's organic with, a, um, with the mother in it. And um, uh, we've, I've made apple cider vinegar. I feel like I'm an intuitive cook. I feel like that needs a little more. Um, so we've made apple cider vinegar. And I don't know, but we could make that this summer. And basically you're taking your apples and you're adding the, um, um, usually it, it can, it's usually done with honey, um, but I don't know if you can do it with maple syrup, but then you just put that in and then the apples ferment and then you get your apple cider vinegar. Anyway, it's a little more detailed than that, but um, I have done that and um, we could do it again. Okay, so tomato paste, um, coconut sugar and, and the um, vinegar and then we're going to add like a little bit less of the oil <laughs> a little bit less of the oil a little bit less of the oil than the vinegar that's what I'm trying to say so I do try and keep it low on the oils um, I don't like to use them daily okay um, so we're going to use a little bit of Dijon mustard here too for this Catalina dressing and that's probably half a teaspoon and then um, the the typical rest recipe recipe uh, calls for um, Worcestershire sauce but um, it has anchovies in it so what we're doing is we're kind of like winging it and making it without that typical um, recipe so we're going to add uh, garlic, onion, and pepper instead. So I have my, this is the um, onion, granulated onion. And I'm gonna, I think that's quite a few carrots. So I'm gonna add a level teaspoon of the granulated onion. And then I have a um, minced, that's the word. I'm thinking granulated minced, we're have a, we're have a, we're having a minced garlic happening here, about a teaspoon of it. And so, oh, oh my gosh, what's the other thing? Um, pepper, of course. We're just gonna go with a little bit of black pepper. Um, I, you know, I just love cayenne and everything. I am, I wasn't going to, but I am just cause I love it. I love cayenne and it helps with circulation so much. So a little bit of that. And so we're making our you can see that the Catalina dressing to put over the carrots. So we'll just get the um, tomato paste mixed in there. And then, you know, you really need to do everything to taste. And I always forget to taste things. And I, I'm often um, hesitant to taste things when I'm doing this live, especially because I tend to um, talk too fast after I've tasted and then I and then I can't breathe and then it's not so good. So, um, but I do want to, you know, I encourage you to change up these recipes a little bit, like if you taste it, because I often don't, and just add more whatever, whatever your taste is, because it, it really needs to be intuitive. It really needs to be um, something that, um, you know, that works for you. And you. To me, you can't just follow a recipe word for word because you've got your own taste. Everybody's is different. Like for instance, yesterday with the pea, um, with the pea casserole, <laughs> I'll call it that. I did end up adding nutritional yeast. I forgot, and then afterwards I was like, "Oh, where's that? Where's that flavor that I'm looking for?" So I did add nutritional yeast to that. I am gonna attempt to um, 
try this and not Okay, don't breathe, don't talk, swallow, very good. It's excellent. Funny how I can eat cattails when talk without a problem though, isn't it? Hmm? Okay. I think maybe a little more apple, sir apple, sir apple cider vinegar. Okay. Okay, so I think that is perfect. And that's what we're gonna do. So these carrots, are still fairly raw. They're just warmed and softened a bit because um, some people around here can't uh, chew raw carrots like that. So, um, so we need to soften them. Okay, what we're gonna do now is, um, I had a thought. I had a thought, I had a thought. I had a thought if I need this thing. Okay, I'm, we're just gonna do this. I was just thinking about my utensils. I can use this. I don't need it for the next dish. Okay, so we're going to add this to it, to the carrots, and we're just going to turn that off and let that cool down. And so the carrots will still be uh, fairly raw and um, still really good for you, still with the, whoops, with the, um, oh my gosh. Still has all the vitamins, antioxidants, it's got potassium, and so you can see the carrots cooking here. I'm just looking to see if you can see what I see. Can you see what I see? And so that's, yeah, that's just right. By the time I turn that off, um, they will be perfect. So that that's like a, it could be done raw. If you wanted to, you could cut the carrots smaller, um, but that's the way, um, that's the way I used to have it when I was a kid, and I really liked it. And so, so that's the yummy Catalina. Okay, the next thing we're gonna make, and just checking here, checking for the, <laughs> checking for the messages. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we have a um, cauliflower and a red onion, and we're going to, um, we're gonna get into this cauliflower. So, and I'm super happy that what I did, I took the cauliflower end and I put it in water. You know, those little uh, Facebook things we've been sharing um, to uh, regrow your vegetables. And I put the end in the cauliflower and it grew some little roots and it's coming. So I'm really happy about that. So I will save this and regrow it. And uh, I think that's super, super cool and awesome that that actually does work. And um, unless you leave it in the water too long, I think that's the thing, and then it starts to rot. So you have to, you do have to get it in the soil at the, at probably the right time, which I must have by accident. So um, this is still boiling. I'm going to scoot them up here so they don't cook. It's taking a while to cool down. And then you can see them better too. Okay, so the little cauliflowers, um, oh, I've got a little blemish, get rid of the little blemish here, okay, cauliflower, and we're going to um, make a raw cauliflower salad, so, <laughs> okay, Chop them up like that, like that, and cauliflower is such a such a fantastic vegetable. It's really, um, you know, super high in B, B vitamins. It is. Um, I think I'll use this because you guys can see through it. Um, high in B vitamins. Of course, it's one of the cru cruciferous ones, right? So it, it has all of the. Um, has all the things that are really good for the colon as well. Um, it's got antioxidants. It's you know protects protects against cancers, as most vegetables do, but specifically for the colon. So um, that might be too much. <laughs> I'm gonna save some for my next recipe. Okay. So and there's only two of us here, so I need to watch what I'm doing. So with this cauliflower, what we're going to do is we are going to um, 
we're going to make the little sauce. Actually, I am going to put this aside and I remember why I had my other measuring cup out now. Okay, other measuring cup. So we're going to go for the vegan A's. And we're going to have, um, we're going to get a clean spoon and we're going to make a little dressing with the vegan A's. So I would say that's, that's about right. I'd say that's about a half a cup of the vegan A's. And um, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to that. Not much, probably about... Um, a tablespoon of lemon juice just to give it a little bit of zing. We're going to add garlic because it's really good for you, antiviral, anti-everything. Garlic is, you know, definitely the um, most amazing um, superfood. You know, it's like, well, it's a, it's a medicinal supplement that is cheap and works for everything. Garlic's amazing. Lowers blood pressure, all kinds of things. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika. Paprika. I did that word didn't want to come out and not too much because I don't want it too smoky um, I'm going to add I, I I know you guys I drive you crazy but I am gonna add a little bit of cayenne I just love it so much everything tastes better with a little bit of spice kind of like salt I tend to overdo it with the cayenne and not so much the salt um, so the other thing I'm going to add here, which is, which I'm going to add this first and then I'm going to talk about what I'm going to add after. Oh, it's brand new. It's brand new. Let me see if I can get the label off, or the label off in front of you. Sometimes these things work and sometimes they don't. <laughs> Without getting maple syrup all over myself. Oh, I did it. Yay. This is not ever the thing that you want to be doing on live opening up a new bottle of anything, but the force is with me. Okay, so um, that was probably like three tablespoons to sweeten it up for the um, maple syrup. And I'm gonna add this. This is um, an Epicure product, and there are several Epicure products that I really, really like, and I really, really like this one, and it's better than bacon. So it is a um, bacon flavored pinto beans with sunflower oil, salt, yeast extract, and tortula yeast, torula, torula yeast. So, um, bacon flavored pinto beans, and this is awesome. So, if you want some bacon on your, or not bacon, <laughs> bacon flavor on your um, recipe, this stuff is really awesome. Quite enjoying that. So, I really like that. There's another one that has that same bacon flavor in a, a bunch of other spices too. And I can't remember if it's like called BLT or CB something. Anyway, um, if you message me, I'll put you in touch with the person that's selling it, the Epicure. And so we're mixing, if you guys wanna see this. Mixing, mixing. And, um, Okay, you can see what we see. What I, you can see it. Oh yay! Uh, it's hard for me to see from here, and it's so funny. I have to still scroll up for the comments, and I, I have no idea. But anyway, using two phones works, so that's awesome. So the other thing we're gonna do is we are going to. Um, I might as well just add the cauliflower right into here, and. Um, My list of all the things that I wanted to put in here. No, I think we're good. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> Did I just throw a whole bunch of that out on the floor? Okay, I'll, I'll quit trying to show you <laughs> until it's finished. It's a bad habit. Okay, we'll try and stir this without getting it all over everything. And, um... You know, I did forget to bring the salt over here, so I am going to do that so I don't forget. So just hang on while I grab some of the Himalayan salt. And do you know, it's so cold today. I am damp and miserable out there. I've got two pairs of pants on. I'm freezing. Anyway, okay, back to the... 
Okay, so um, yeah, so doesn't that look amazing? What I'm gonna do, uh, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some of um, Joanne uh, Calendar, who has the One Tree Farm. She delivered these beautiful chives. And so I am going to add chives, and you know what? I think I'm gonna add chives to both of these dishes because they just bring out so much flavor. And um, I just love them. And the same thing, right? So chives with the onion family and the antioxidants and the antiviral. And, uh, you know, they're just little things, but they, they do a lot more than you would think they do. I'm going to sprinkle these in here. I'm going to sprinkle some in here. And um, I'm going to save some for topping. And then I want to put this in something that you can really see better. My phone is beeping. Don't those people know that I'm on live at 11? <laughs> You're not supposed to follow me between 11 and 11.30. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so um, if you wanted to, you could add nutritional yeast to this if you wanted it to have a cheesy flavor. But this is with the, um, uh, well, with the vegan A's, with the lemon juice, with the better than bacon, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of smoked paprika, and a little bit of maple syrup. And so that is really good. So that's your um, raw cauliflower uh, salad. And then we have the beautiful, which I think you guys can see pretty good from there. We have the beautiful Catalina carrots with the... Um, with the chives, I forgot to put chives on here for the picture. I have to have it pretty for the picture. Um, okay, and we have the fabulous, I put them in this little thing, the fabulous um, cattails. I just love them. And I love them even more because uh, it's been a couple of years since I've done this and these are amazing, a complete food source, good for you, um, healthy, uh, they can be used as a medicine, they can be used as an aid for um, skin rashes or insect bites, um, and they taste amazing raw and cooked for the, for the new shoots. So I will continue to eat my little cattail on the corn, on the cob, <laughs> and we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I wonder what else I'm going to find. I'm so happy that I found those. So, um, so thanks for joining me this morning and stay dry and warm. I think I'm actually not going to be in the garden today because it's just too wet out there. I went out this morning and did a slug check and <clears throat> I think it's actually raining too hard for the slugs to even be out because I didn't find any. Okay, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow morning at 11, and have a really great day. Stay warm, and let me know if you have any other requests or any recipes that you'd like me to do, and put the comments in the Facebook, and be sure to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.